All right, hello everybody. So if you're seeing this video, I just want to say if you're seeing this video, that means that what I'm doing was successful and I want to share it with you. So I'm going to experiment here because the Terminator X, the Holly Terminator X, doesn't have any thermistor inputs. So meaning that you can't hook up a temperature sensor to it. It has inputs for like pressure and stuff like that. So you could do a pressure sensor, which I actually did hook up a coolant pressure sensor to one of the inputs, but I wanted to find a way to do, after I found out that I couldn't do a temperature sensor because I wanted a long trans temp, I couldn't do it. So what I'm gonna do today is modify a regular two wire harness. So this is uh, just a regular two wire uh, temperature sensor. So basically just has your five volt and your ground and then it uses resistance through the circuit and then it gives a resistance reading back to the computer. So there's a basically like a five volt pull up circuit inside the computer. So what I want to try to do is do that in the harness. So I already have this wired up and I'll lay it down so I can show it to you. So basically what we're doing is we're converting the two wire harness over to a three wire harness. So one is going to be the five volt, one is going to be the ground but instead of the 5 volt just coming in passing through the harness resistance changes and then it goes back through the signal wire of the ground which you can really uh, reverse them on a two-wire sensor what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a designated 5 volt is going to be the green the white wire is going to be the signal going back and then the brown is going to be the ground so when I hook up the 5 volt it's going to basically increase the voltage coming out of this white wire instead of being reduced by the resistance here to a point that you can't you can't use it there's a 2.2 k ohm 2200 ohm resistor in here and what this is going to do is it's basically going to boost the signal going back to a 5 volt analog output from here or input to the computer that we can use hopefully uh, and calibrate it and punch it in the computer and we can use this thing in the Terminator. So, so some of you guys may be familiar with the pull-up circuit already. If you have done like a uh, basic factory harness LS swap and you had to do like a 12 volt pull-up circuit to get the TAC to work, as like mine on the P59 computer in the Ranger over here, I had to do a 12 volt pull-up circuit the same way using a thousand ohm resistor from 12 volt onto the tack signal wire because the tack signal isn't strong enough to actually run a gauge. So you run that pull-up circuit, it boosts the signal, and then you can get a high enough voltage reading that could, can be usable to run something. So that's essentially the same thing as what we're doing here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, since I have the known good pressure coolant pressure sensor working, I'm going to take the power and ground off of this circuit and honestly what I could do is I could probably use the same input wire I would just have to look at my coolant pressure circuit and see if it gives me a reading so I might do that or I could just do a separate a separate input which which maybe I'll do that and then I'll show how to configure that so let's get this thing off so this black wire this is going to be the ground so and the the five volt and ground you can grab off of any other five volt. So it doesn't it doesn't affect it doesn't affect the other circuits when you when you split them. But the like temperature sensors and stuff like that because it's giving the resistance back it um, you can't split those because it'll change the resistance and it changes your reading. So voltage is voltage is voltage. You, so you're basically hooking it up in parallel and uh, it doesn't really change anything. So what I'm going to do here now is my white is going to be the signal, the brown is going to be the ground, and the green is going to be the 5 volt. And I'm probably just going to twist them around. i got to strip this one. I'll twist them around and uh, I'll just probably separate them a little bit just so they don't touch. Because we're just we're just experimenting right now. We're just we're just testing. I don't even know if I'm going to use this. I might not even use this. I just want to see if it's going to work. 
So I'm really just uh, just playing around. Uh, the Holly 7 inch dash that I have in the car does have thermistor inputs. So I could just run like trans temp to the dash. But if I wanted to data log it, I think you can data log from the dash, but we're gonna we're gonna try this this way. So power and ground is hooked up, the five volt in the ground. I am going to now run a signal wire. I'll probably grab a different input and then I'll run it through and we'll wire that thing up. Okay. So I ended up switching to a genuine GM sensor. The other sensor that I was using was showing like 0.2 volts. And I knew that wasn't right. So you see it's reading three volts right now. So this is the green wire. White wire is going to the signal, which is essentially the multimeter. So when I hook the five volt up, it shows me 3.01 volts with the sensor in cold water. And now I'm gonna move it over to warm water. And you can see the voltage changes pretty quickly. And the temperature isn't that much different in these cups right now. But you can see it's making some decent changes. So I have a usable five volt signal. And now I'm gonna actually hook this up to an input on the Holly and show that it uh, works. So what I did here to try to find a manual uh, basic calibration, I took some uh, a can with some ice water in it and put the sensors in there. They've been sitting for a little while. So now we have uh, coolant temp down to 34 degrees in 4.01 volts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record this and I'm going to pull the sensors out until they get to basically room temperature. That way I can see what the temperature is for the voltage. And then we'll start the car and I'm going to put it in the radiator cap hole. And we can get some, some heat readings on it and we'll set up our table. So what I did was I stuck the temperature sensor in the radiator there and ran it and I got a data log here. So basically this is what it looks like. So red line is coolant temp sensor, actual, and green line is the sensor that I added. So green line is the trans temp simulated because it's in the radiator so what I wanted to do was see a, a comparison between the two because they're going to be pretty close in temperature so I did run it for a while and if you look here there is zero engine rpm so it's at the stall speed uh, zero engine that's what it says stall they're about three degrees apart until I start the engine then here it does spike up at the radiator side where the trans temp is, so it's about uh, five degrees hotter, and then it eventually gets to a point where it's about 10 degrees separation. Pretty much the whole, pretty much the whole scan. So 192, 201, it's like pretty much anywhere I click, it's about 10, 10 degrees apart. So the calibration that I have in there seems to be, seems to be pretty good. Let's go in there and open this thing up. So here's what I have for the, the calibration here. Basically goes 239 to negative 30. And that's what the the bottom looks like so it looks a little wavy because I did take actuals from like 30 degrees here I just interpolated because there was an issue when I started it uh, because the thermostat wasn't open 
So there's a point when it starts to warm up and then it stops because the thermostat is not open. And then at 160, it's, it opens and starts circulating everything. So that's why you see the curve. These are actuals. The straight line that's interpolated between like 200 to 60. And then here I artificially inflated it about 10 degrees so it would show a little bit of a higher reading. So I feel like that would be pretty decent for like a transmission temperature curve. We did actually test it to 30 and anything over 200 I'm I'm going to want to see I'm okay with seeing artificially high temperature there because I I want to basically shut it off and keep it safe anyways. So that's kind of how I did it and if you wanted to run the temperature sensor on the Terminator X that's what I did.